Today, we're gonna to talk about how all of this happened. One of the number one questions I get is, who the hell are you, bro? What are you, some rich Saudi prince or something to have all these guitars? And the answer is no. I am not independently wealthy. Nobody's buying me these guitars. This is a culmination of passion, meeting knowledge, meeting desire, you know, working hard. That's the first thing. So number one, to be able to invest and to have money in the first place, you got to work and make money. I always joke around when people are asking like, what band are you in? Which by the way, it's Lost Symphony. I say I'm a DJ. I get invited to play and get paid well to go to hotels that would never have me as a guest. I would never be asked to play with my band at the Four Seasons in Boston. One of the things that's important is having a job that goes along with your passions. And I work in a recording studio and I do this with you guys all the time, all the time, all the time I'm surrounding myself with that musical thing. You're putting that energy out to the universe. It's part of that whole manifestation process. Like, the guitars come to you. Now, the first thing I always tell people is, it's about knowledge being power. You have to know what you're looking at. Like, I saw that this guitar was $750 online. It's a 1964 Hummingbird, and it was sold to me as non-functional because it has a bunch of cracks. Um, you know, it needed a little bit of love, but I knew, I knew researching it, like, oh, there's another one that's 5,000. There's another one that's $6,000. Like, there's no way, unless this guitar is a total lie and it's completely unusable, is it not worth $750? So I put up the money, I took it to my luthier, took a long time, and then I now I have an amazing, amazing sounding hummingbird for the price of less than a new Gibson right now. And that's because I want every guitar guy. I want to play and own every guitar at least once before I die. When I used to go online, I first found Reverb, I'm like, oh, so I can have my bad decisions shipped right to me? And I started going through Reverb like a freaking crazy person. And I realized like, oh wow, that's a good deal. That's a good deal. And I started realizing, I see the deals. Because I want so many guitars and because I love so much about guitar, I always took the emotion out of it. It was never like, I need to search for uh, a 57 Black Beauty or I need to search for this specific gold top. My feeling is, is when you're specifically looking for, oh, I want that uh, Telecaster Elite or I want a, a 78 Les Paul Custom, that's when you go and end up paying retail because you have this emotional thing where you're looking for something specific and someone goes, oh, well, I got what you're looking for. I'm just looking for a good deal, man. I've always wanted an L5S. It's actually one of the most expensive guitars I, I ever paid for. I think I paid $2,400 at the time. Crazy deal, because these are six, $7,000. I mean, it, the, the input jack got ripped out. It's got a little bit of dings and dangs. But I knew, I knew when I saw this, I'm not going to find a better deal on this in my life. I saw it, I'm like, that's a sitting duck. I pulled my money and I said, I'm gonna buy that this week. So here's the order of operations. A lot of people say, oh, it's not safe to invest in guitars. You're right, it's one of those things that like, you could try to liquidate your assets. Like if I tried selling, uh, you know, my blood moon tomorrow, if I need to sell this, if I need to, that's when I'm not gonna get the price that I can't refuse. I don't need to sell any of these. So when people offer me money for them or they wanna trade for them, I make sure it's something I want to do. That's, that's a huge thing about guitar players. We all need money. We are the kind of people that will buy a Les Paul Custom instead of buying a house, instead of paying the electric bill. So I get that. So understand that the other side of that is, is that somebody needs to sell a guitar for that. I bought two of these guitars, a Les Paul Les Plus, one for 800 and one for 1,000 in the same week. These are like, 2,000-ish guitars, maybe a little less, a little bit more. I just saw one and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that that, it's a grand shit. Like, holy crap. It's also about showing up with the money because cash is king. It's about being able to go online and remove all your emotions, go down that list, whether it's on Craigslist, whether it's on Reverb, and go, oh wow, that 1936 HG00. This is one of my favorite uh, purchases ever. This guitar sat online for a long time. It's probably a four to six thousand dollar guitar i bought it for 1500 shipped and it's because it sh sat for a while i sent the guy an offer he was like dude do you know what this is i said yeah i don't really have the money but i just bought her sister 
I had an L double O. We went back and forth. He was super nice. He's like, here you go. And sent me an offer of like 1550 for this guitar. Sometimes being a little nice or just communicating with people, like they'll end up doing nice things for you. Hey man, I sat around the shop for a while, have this incredible guitar for an amazing deal. I'm the kind of guy that'll take 1550. Now I have a $5,000 guitar and then I'll take two guitars and trade for a $10,000 guitar. I traded a PRS, I wanna say it was $1,500 in for this 1930 Epiphone Seville. This is like a $10,000 guitar. I didn't know. Guys, like this is a really cool guitar. I play it. Wow, it plays nice, it's really cool, it's old. And I just took a chance. I said, you know what, it, it looks old, it, it could be cool. It's Epiphone New York, it says 420 for the serial number on it. I'm gonna go with it. And the more research I did on this guitar, the more I realized, wow, I, I made a really, really good deal. Here's what it comes down to. First off, be good to people. Just be nice, communicate. People are gonna be a lot more apt to give you a good deal if you're nice and you're transparent. Hey man, I only have this amount of money. Or hey, this is what I'm looking to spend. If not, I totally get it. Cool, awesome guitar. It's also about knowing what you're looking at. Not having to sell or buy at any specific time. Like when, if I had to sell specific guitars right now, again, the right now price is not the same as someone coming down and over time saying, hey, oh, I want this. 1969 ES-150. I'm only into this for 1400 bucks. This is probably a, a, a four to $5,000 guitar. So if I was to trade for this, I would trade for something that way and you can continue to trade up. It's a passion of mine. I don't wanna sell these guitars. I'm not into this to get money or to make money. I have just learned how to take $100 and turn it into $500 and $500 and turn it into $1,000 and to remove my emotion. As Plato said, emotion is the death to logic. But the bottom line is this, I got all of this by working really hard, by knowing what I was looking at, by being good to people and people being good to me. And that's really what you're seeing here. And I love sharing that knowledge with you and I love sharing that passion with you. So remember, knowledge is power. I have people reach out to me all the time asking me about deals and I always get back to them. I always give them my opinion because I firmly believe that if you know about something and someone takes the time to ask you, just give them the information. And that's what this channel is about and that's what this video is about. I'm not suggesting you should trade in your 401k plan and buy a bunch of guitars, but if you can get guitars like I have at the right prices and you know how to trade up and you know what you're looking at, you too can have an entire studio filled with guitars while not being a millionaire. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already?